so what what is nutrition basically nutrition is the taking of food and then eventually assimilating or absorbing the food particles and to generate energy for the body to do specific works in daily life so nutrition in plants and animals are different because in plants nutrition is autotrophic and in animals nutrition is heterotrophic in nature so now we will discuss the different types of nutrition in plants and animals so autotrophic nutrition means the type of nutrition which involves mainly photosynthesis which occurs with the help of mainly chlorophyll which is a chlorophyll a which is a pigment green colored pigment in plants and the organisms or animals who does not have chlorophyll as their as a green pigment for photosynthesis they cannot opt for photosynthesis or cannot opt for the autotrophic nutrition and so their mode of nutrition is heterotrophic nutrition where they absorb the their nutrition from the green plants and they assimilate the amount the nutrition or the food absorbing from the green plants so they are called the heterotrophic mode of nutrition which is of the defined types like holozoic saprophytic and parasitic so now holozoic what do you mean by holozoic holozoic nutrition type is basically the where organisms absorb particular food materials within their cells break those food materials by oxidative oxidative uh, respiration and the, after that they absorb or assimilate that amount of food to generate atp or energy from those food this is the holozoic mode of nutrition which uh, involves uh, like humans cows amoeba etc now the second mode that is saprophytic nutrition what is saprophytic nutrition saprophytic nutrition is also a type of heterotrophic nutrition where the organism rely on the living uh, rely on the, the dead uh, the organisms like dead or decaying organisms like dead plants dead animals and they absorb their nutrition and proteins from those dead animals and plants so they are called saprophytic their nutrition is called saprophytic mode of nutrition this uh, involves fungi different types of fungi yeast etc and now what is parasitic parasitic mode of nutrition is again a type of holotrophic uh, heterotrophic nutrition where organisms rely for their nutrition on not dead or decayed organisms but on the living organisms like they make those living organisms as their host so they live within or outside of the, the living organisms or the, and make make them host and absorb or grab particular nutrition and their the minerals from those living organisms or which we call the host so this is the mode of nutrition nutrition which we call parasitic mode of nutrition so this involves the uh, leech leeches mites etc these kinds of organisms which uh, rely on the living organisms for their food and nutrition and they also they live within the they can also live within the host so this is the three uh, different types of heterotrophic nutrition that is holozoic saprophytic and parasitic so now we will come to autotrophic nutrition so in autotrophic mode of nutrition we will definitely see the plants are involved fully in the process of autotrophic mode of nutrition where plants do photosynthesis that is photo means photons and synthesis means to make something so using the energy of photons coming from the sun plants use that energy present in the photons and convert that uh, energy in the photons into chemical energy and they convert the energy uh, they, they uh, produce the food that is main food is glucose so by converting the energy present in the photons they convert this energy into chemical energy by producing glucose as the main product of photosynthesis that is C6H12O6 so in in during photosynthesis plants absorb CO2 or carbon dioxide from the nature water and other 
essential nutrients or minerals from the soil through root and the, for the energy present in the photons coming from the sun that is the sunlight these are the essential or necessary the requirements that plants have to absorb from the nature or outside environment to produce the main product of the photosynthesis that is glucose so and the product plants produce during this course of uh, autotrophic nutrition that is they evolve oxygen in the nature and the main product C6H12O6 or glucose is produced which is also called starch or the carbohydrate so this is the main process of the autotrophic nutrition mode of nutrition where plants use and also plants require for this process chlorophyll A pigment which is a blue a green colored pigment which we have already already dis discussed so plants absorb carbon dioxide from the nature along with water and other minerals from the soil uh, through roots uh, along with the sunlight and using these requirements and using uh, the, the chlorophyll which eventually absorbs the photons or the sunlight the plants make the main product glucose or C6H12O6 along with they emit oxygen gas in the outer environment so this is the main process of autotrophic mode of nutrition so now we will discuss two different types of specific nutrition mode the first is nutrition in amoeba amoeba is a single we all know amoeba is a single cell or unicellular organism this is a nucleus and it has a cytoplasm around the nucleus along with the cellular organelles so when the particular amoeba body wants to in the require it require the particular nutrition for, or food it uh, eventually grabs the if this is a food in front of it present in front of it it grabs the food by enlarging one of its a portion of the cell that we call the pseudopodia it forms a particular pseudopodia that eventually engulfs the food like this so this is nucleus so the, by this manner a particular amoeba body when a food is present in front of it it acquires it forms a, a particular uh, area it enlarges a particular area of its cell which we call the pseudopodia and engulfs the food present in front of it by this manner it grabs the food within its own cell and after that it degrades or break, breaks down the food and then absorb or assimilate the energy present in the food for its uh, particular purposes so this is the mode of nutrition in amoeba now we will discuss the second type of particular mode of nutrition that is nutrition in paramecium so in case of paramecium we will see a ciliated body cilia means the uh, small leg like structures or finger like structures with uh, with the help of which a body of paramecium moves forward or backward to and from in to and from motion and when a particular food material is present in front of um, a paramecium it goes towards the direction of the food and with the help of these pseudopodia like with the help of these ciliated structures which we call the cilia ciliated structures they engulf their food so with the help of these ciliated structures or cilia like structures they go towards the food the direction at the, of the food and they engulf the food within their cell and then eventually breaks, breaks down the food to get the energy present within the food so this is the particular mode of nutrition in paramecium and when they get the food they uh, translocate uh, trans uh, transfers the food to a particular chamber or particular uh, portion of their body and after that they breaks down the food they assimilate the energy present in the food so this is the nutrition in paramecium so with this the defined types of or modes of nutrition in plants and animals comes to an end so now we will discuss some short questions and the questions regarding nutrition in plants and animals the first question is uh, what is the incorrect statement among the four given options so among the four given options we can see definitely this option c is the wrong or incorrect the statement where uh, it is it has been uh, said that they uh, or the plants convert carbon dioxide and water into carbohydrates in the absence of sunlight we all know the in the previous um, discussion that in during photosynthesis presence of sunlight is the most important criteria or the most um, necessary criteria for doing photosynthesis so if sunlight is not present 
so no photosynthesis will occur and so no uh, carbohydrates will be produced whether there is carbon dioxide and water are present so within uh, without sunlight or without the presence of sunlight there will be no photosynthesis so the option c is the incorrect option so in the second question the we can see the uh, we have to conclude what is the correct statement regarding photosynthesis so the option c is the correct answer where we can see 6 co2 re is reacting with 12 h2o along with the uh, necessary elements of photosynthesis that is chlorophyll the pigment green pigment and along with the sunlight and these are producing the main product of photosynthesis that is a glucose C6H12O6 that is a glucose or starch along with the emitting oxygen in the outer environment and producing 6H2. So this is the correct statement regarding photosynthesis. So in the next question it says that which condition or which criteria on which depends the opening and closing of stomata. So the correct answer will be the water content present in the guard cells. Now we have to know what are the guard cells. The first of all the guard cells are the components of stomata. Stomata are the small pores present on the lower surface of leaves and these have each stomata have two component guard cells like this. So each guard cell contains a particular nucleus and the uh, around the nucleus there is cytoplasm and around the guard cells there are several other cells so this is the structure of stomata where the uh, water content present within the guard cells are the main criteria for opening or closing of stomata that is the opening or closing of, or, of stomata mainly depends on the water content or the turgidity present in within the guard cells when water enters enters within the guard cells the guard cells become more turgid and more they get more uh, larger in size so after a water entering within the guard cells the turgidity increases the which causes the opening of the of the stomata and when water is released from the guard cells the guard uh, turgidity of the guard cells become decreased and the guard cells become shrinked and because of that shrinking of guard cells the stomata the stomatal pore is uh, become closed so depending on the uh, entering or uh, presence of water content or turgidity of the water in the guard cells the uh, stomatal pores open on the depends on depending on that the stomatal pore opens or closes so the next question says to state the form in which most plants absorb nitrogen from the uh, outer environment so the correct answer will be option b where there is nitrates and nitrites and urea in in this particular forms plants convert the atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates ni and nitrites and then after that urea uh, and then they assimilate the environmental nitrogen the, within their cells to use the, the particular nitrogen to make uh, to uh, to make the uh, DNA backbone or the other essential works to do. So this is the forms in which plants absorb atmospheric nitrogen. Which one process does not occur during the photosynthesis? The, so the correct option will be option number B, where the it says carbon dioxide is re, uh, released during the process. We all know not carbon dioxide but oxygen is always uh, released as a gas or as a byproduct of photosynthesis along with the production of glucose or starch and water. As the saliva in our mouth does not have the amylase enzyme. So what will be the consequence or what um, the process will be hampered due to this cause. So the correct option will be option B starch breaking down into sugars we uh, do not um, the, the starch will be will not be broken down into sugars as the saliva of our mouth contains salivary amylase which breaks down the food present in mouth into maltose to form the simplest form of food that is glucose so if salivary amylase is not present within the mouth so no breaking down of the food present in mouth to form the maltose will be ha will happen and no glucose will be formed so the, the first process of digestion of food will be definitely hampered if the salivary amylase is not present within the mouth so starch or the, the food breaking down into simple uh, sugars simple sugars will not happen or will be this process will be hampered so the next question says in which part of the elementary canal food is finally digested so the answer correct answer will be option d 
there is a small intestine in the small intestine within the inner wall of the small intestine there are uh, several um, or millions of small finger like projections which are which we call the villi or villi so these small finger like projections they increase the surface area for the digestion of food they increase the surface area of digestion of food particles so within the uh, villi or within the small intestine the uh, food is finally become digested so now we will discuss thought answer type questions the first question says what is the role of acid in our stomach so the first there are two uh, main or important roles of acid uh, present in our stomach that is the uh, one is to make the medium of the stomach inside the stomach acidic why making the medium acidic is uh, most important because of the, only after making the medium acidic the main enzyme pepsin become activated the inactive pep pepsin become activated and so the pepsin will convert or break down the food particles for the for the easy digestion or for the digestion to start and the second thing is the acidic environment or the acidic the acidic medium within the stomach eventually kills the bacteria coming along with the food particles which we are the engulfing these are the two main uh, importance or two main necessities of uh, having a role of acid in our stomach. So next question says the, what is the role of the digestive enzymes in our digestive system. So the digestive enzymes mainly breaks down the food particles, uh, larger food particles into small pieces in order to digest the food then assimilate to absorb the main energy present within the food by oxidative respiration that happens within the mitochondria like we can uh, take the example of amyl amylase or salivary amylase which breaks down the uh, food particles uh, into maltose from that into the simple simplest form of food that is the glucose or sugar so amylase uh, breaks down food or starch into maltose and from that it breaks down to glucose or sugar so by this manner the digestive enzymes breaks down the large food particles into small pieces and then digest the food particles by the making the converting those food particles into simpler, simpler forms to assimilate those and to grab or absorb the energy present within the food materials by the method of oxidative respiration which occurs in the mitochondria. So the next question says the what is the method of digestion of fats in our body this involves the process first of all starts with the upper part of small intestine which receives the bile juice then the bile juice contains a, a particular salt that is called bile salt which breaks down the large fat bodies or fat elements present in the food to convert them into smaller globules and this process is called emulsification this process of breaking down of large fat molecules or fat bodies into smaller globules by the bile salts is called the emulsification process after which small intestine releases the the lipase enzyme which breaks down the fat globules or smaller fat glo globules after emulsification to uh, form or uh, convert them into fatty acids and glycerol which are the simplest form of fats after being digested in our body so the the assimilation occurs after the production or conversion of large fat molecules the uh, into fatty acids and glycerol and then they are uh, assimilated or absorbed in our body so this is the process of digestion of fats in our body so for um, the again i am repeating the upper part of small intestine receives bile juice from the intestine the bile juice contains bile salts which then breaks down the large fat molecules into smaller globules which we call the emulsification process and after that the li uh, small intestine releases lipase enzyme which breaks down the smaller globular fat, uh, fat molecules uh, which are produced through the process of emulsification and convert those small fat globules into fatty acids and glycerol for further assimilation. So the next question says why does the problem of acidity occurs in our body? So when the inner linings of our stomach releases uh, excessive or more the acids then the, it is necessary for the break, breaking down of food then the acid problem of acidity is, uh, is started because a particular pH or acidic environment should be maintained within the stomach in order to digest and breaking down of food. So if somehow the, uh, the inner linings of our stomach produce more acids 
than they are necessary for the breaking down of food then it becomes problematic and the more acidic environment is become created which hampers the main digestion of food so the when we are starving or when we are the we have engulfed excessive amount of food in our body so these kinds of problems will be happening uh, because of the excessive amount of acids which are being generated within the inner linings of the stomach or from the inner linings of the stomach which increases which decreases the ph more than which is necessary or the for more decreasing the ph more from the necessary level so that is why it is become problematic so for the next question it says which is which enzyme first initiates the the digestion of food in our body and the, the enzyme pepsin basically it breaks down protein in the food materials to form the amino acids in order to assimilate the proteins or and the nitrogens in our body so the enzyme pepsin first starts degrading the protein present in the food in order to convert them or uh, uh, to form the amino acids and then assimilate uh, for the nitrogen and proteins present within the food particles so in the next question we will now discuss the specific roles of these specific elements like trypsin causes the breaking down of proteins into amino acids within the in the course of digestion of proteins present in the food particle now the next is the muscular walls of stomach they help in mixing of food properly with the digestive juice or we call the bile juice in order to break down the fats larger fat molecules into smaller fat molecules by emulsification which we have already already discussed and the, from that the fat molecules are being assimilated in our body and next is the salivary amylase which converts the amylose present in the starch or food particles in the mouth and convert them into maltose which are which become eventually uh, converted into glucose or the simplest form of food or we call starch so these are the main roles or important roles of the specific elements like trypsin muscular walls of stomach and salivary amylase so the next question says why the herbivores contain a longer uh, small intestine in comparison with the carnivores who contain a the less a small the uh, or the less larger or longer small intestine because herbivores contain cellulose digestive digesting enzymes because they have to digest the cellulose present in the leaves of the plants or the several parts of the part, pl plants so herbivores contain the cellulose digesting enzymes and these cellulose digesting enzymes are produced by specific bacteria present in their stom uh, stomach which takes to produce this particular cellulose digesting enzymes in the for a longer period of time so to produce the cellulose digesting enzymes those particular bacteria takes a longer period of time and because of this to rest uh, to make the food the, to preserve the food for a longer period of time is a necessity for the herbivores and uh, due to which they have, the, have to develop a longer or a larger small intestine the in comparison with the carnivores who don't have to digest any cellulose or don't have to produce any cellulose digesting enzymes so they have a small intestine so this is the main cause why herbivores have a long or larger and small intestine in comparison to the carnivores who have a small in the or the less larger small intestine